Hello, this is Philippe with the second lecture on turbulence. Uh, this one will have equations. So uh, let's go. Uh, so outline, uh, three slides, dance again, uh, explaining the reynolds average navier stokes equations, uh, starting from scratch, uh, the power and what I call the paradox of Reynolds averaging and turbulence modeling, and then the intellectual nature of a turbulence model. So on the right, you can see um, a picture of a solution we have uh, with a conventional turbulence model over a high lift wing. And if it shows the skin friction and of much interest, it's the uh, high red skin friction on the slab. And then the dark blue regions, which are very low skin friction, and that's separation. It's had a lot of influence on the flow on the forces and the pitching moment and all that. So we're asking the turbulence model to predict this a very complex three-dimensional flow and to do a decent job on in boundary layers around the slat brackets uh, on the nacelle, on the fuselage, very long uh, fuselage, the boundary layer thickening uh, in the corner region uh, and all that. Okay. So the equations. Um, so the true velocity field is three-dimensional and time-dependent. This is the one we would have in a direct numerical simulation. I showed you pictures uh, last time. Uh, we can assume that the average is in time. So u of x, y, z, t becomes uh, capital U of x, y, z. And we also use the overline uh, symbol to represent time averaging. And in the little figure, you can see an example of a turbulent signal, and then in, in red, it's average. Um, so we define the fluctuation, uh, u prime, as the difference between the value of the function at a time minus uh, its average. Um, so often we write that u is capital U plus u prime. We also have the property that the time average of u prime is zero. So let's take the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. And average them. So the continuity condition, uh, partial ui, partial xi, with a summation over i, you know, x, y, and z, uh, is this, and it's linear, so it's average. You just uh, switch from uh, lowercase ui to uppercase, no change. So now let's look at the momentum equation. So the material derivative of ui, which is the Lorentzian derivative plus the convection term, is made up of the pressure term and the viscous term. So let's average this. So the time derivative uh, goes away. The pressure uh, term, just like uh, before for the continuity condition, we just put an overline over P. And the same thing for the viscous term, which is linear. It just goes from little ui to capital ui. So when things get interesting is that this uh, nonlinear convection term uh, gives you a first a term that looks like the old one, but with capital. And then what we put on the right-hand side, a term that contains the products of the fluctuations and then averaged over time. Uh -huh. So this quantity created by nonlinearity is called the Reynolds stress. And it's the entire uh, object of turbulence modeling to represent the Reynolds stress. Um, and with my partners at NASA, we did some cases in which we solve uh, this equation for capital UI and took the Reynolds stress of the DNS, just added it to right hand side, and then we got the mean field of the DNS just fine. Okay, so turbulence modeling, uh, you know. Its power is that it goes from this very complex uh, simulation to a uh, flow field that is uh, steady and often has a fewer dimension. Um, so uh, in, in this case, we go from uh, the value of x, y, z, t to an average, which is only a function of x and y. But we need those Reynolds stresses. Um, and one way is to describe the Reynolds average flow as a flow of a fluid with some 
Irish French internal stresses, you know, worse than a non-Newtonian fluid, for instance. Now, these stresses are not a property of the fluid. Uh, unlike the viscous stresses, they depend on the entire history of the flow. Um, and in this case, you can see, you can tell that this flow is unsteady, there's a shedding of vortices, and then also a lot of uh, dependence on the third direction. Um, so the job of a turbulence model is to give these stresses, which are hidden inside uh, time averaging and third direction and all that, knowing only uh, capital U. So hoping for rigorous approximation is not reasonable. This is why, you know, I was for a hundred years since the days of parental, turbulence modeling has been empirical and will never be perfect. Okay, so the what I call the intellectual nature of a turbulence model. Uh, so first of all, really we're trying to serve uh, the field of CFD, which is they need in the solvers a simple and a local, I think, mathematical model for these uh, Reynolds stresses. Um, so the most common way to produce them is the artificial concept of an eddy viscosity due to Pusinesque, in which the Reynolds stress is equal to the eddy viscosity times uh, the strain tensor. So it's like the molecular viscous uh, term, but now with an eddy viscosity that will come from somewhere else. Um, a real finity is much larger than new. Uh, and again, it is a property of the flow, which is different in a channel and past the circular cylinder and everywhere. So now to be impartial, I'll give you the simplest model that in common use, that's the SA model of 92. Uh, and I'm just showing you the basic form in the boundary layer and away from the wall. Mm -hmm. So I created uh, an equation that gives you the evolution of new T and has uh, terms of three natures. Um, uh, why is the distance from the wall? U is the velocity of the mean flow. So there's a production term. Uh, shearing, the UDY, uh, creates turbulence. We know that. Uh, so here, it directly just multiplies new T. Um, then we have uh, wall uh, destruction term or wall confinement term, which um, <clears throat> represents the fact that eddies that are tumbling along the wall cannot get larger than the distance from the wall. So when y is small, uh, it's going to draw down the eddy viscosity. That's why we have a negative sign. And then we have a diffusion term, which is made of two parts. Uh, the first part is kind of a classical, uh, you know, viscous term uh, with the eddy viscosity doing the, uh, the mixing. And then plus a term that comes out of just a human mind uh, that has the uh, derivative, so the gradient of nu t uh, squared. So all of these were uh, picked to have the right dimension. Um, and then the sigma and the c constants were adjusted to work on a few simple cases, like a wake and a mixing layer and a boundary layer. Now, the idea of going to one equation model was uh, goes to Baldwin and Barth at NASA around uh, in the late 80s. Uh, it wouldn't have happened. The SA model would, wouldn't exist without them. And then I found that it had much in common with the Russian model of Sekundov called uh, new T92 that nobody knew about in the West. Mm -hmm. um, so this model uh, has been quite useful and I've also put a lot of improvements on it, but the, the basic form, you know, and as of today, uh, the CB1 constant is exactly the same as it was in 92. Uh, now other common models have two equations like k epsilon, k omega, and seven equations. That's the uh, more elaborate models. They have, they directly have equations for the Reynolds stresses and one for the dissipation. There's no eddy viscosity. So I'll get back to those later. Thank you.